Anna Kasparian and Jake Uger with you. Um, I want to thank the members real quick. Uh, member number 694, Mike Carter. He joined up in January 27th, 2010. And also member uh, 2449, Hasni Mirza. Uh, Hasni joined up on August 16th of 2010. Hey, get it. Members make the show happen. You guys uh, get our podcast. You get uh, access to our archives. You can watch shows from months ago. And you get our awesome post-game show. Yesterday we talked about whether or not we would be willing to star in a herpes commercial. That was a lot of fun. The day before that, uh, I complained about the parking attendant downstairs. I know that sounds like a great post-game show. <laughs> but people enjoyed it. It was fun. It was fun. Um, Jank, go. All right. Go. All right. First of all, Hosni, uh, it's interesting. It's kind of like Hosni Mubarak. It's kind of close. That's fascinating. So it's an interesting name you've picked for today. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, instead of being a bad guy, it turns out our Hosni is an awesome guy because he's a member on the Young Turks. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I do want to say one thing about membership. I, I, <laughs> I always say this every once in a while, but I've decided that it's actually an excellent idea because, like, if you're watching just the YouTube clips or you're watching this show live every once in a while, you're missing, like, I don't know, such a huge chunk of the show that I think is fun. I mean, I I, I don't know. What are you, crazy? you got to be a member. <laughs> I really, do, I mean, I really believe it, but obviously I'm the most biased man in America in, in that regard. Okay, now, a um, couple of funny stories. Wendy calls me right before the show started. Uh, uh, Wendy and Pro have gone back to uh, L.A., and so she plops Pro down in front of the TV when I'm about to come on. And she said that when I came on, uh, Pro started laughing, like smiling, be like, <laughs> <laughs> which is the schmoopiest, poopiest thing you ever heard in your entire life. But here comes the funny part of the story. So, and the show's over. Chris Matthews comes on. He's like, ah! and so he starts crying. Yeah, I would start crying too. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. But um, that's a very cute story. How much do you miss your baby? I miss him a lot. Aww. What are you going to do? Aww. Go ahead, Steve. Um. Hey, Jank. Um, my parents have been watching you on TiVo. Uh, my parents, their English is very bad, so they don't understand a damn thing he's saying. But they like to just sit there like pro does and just watch Jank's face. <laughs> That's Jank! He's on TV! They're amazed by it. Well, What's more amazing is that my dad will say crazy, stupid things like, So how long has Sujay been on MSNBC? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, no, my, yesterday I came home from work and my parents were like, oh, we watched Jenk on MSNBC today. And uh, Jenk, it was yesterday when you decided to become saucy, right? You're a little... No, yesterday is when I decided to go hard. Right, right, right. Um, yes, uh, so you had a little uh, sass and you were aggressive yesterday and that was the show that my parents caught. And my, I came home and my dad's like, wow. Jenk is really, really angry. <laughs> he's like, wow, he's like an aggressive ass host. And I was like, yeah, that's what he does. So they enjoyed it. They thought it was entertaining. Okay, good. Yeah. With all these parents watching me, uh, my, I'm surprised my ratings aren't double what they are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, for the people at home that don't know who you have missed previous shows, don't know who Sujay is, it's another one of our high school friends. Uh, Steve and I went to high school with him. Steve's dad, I don't know, he's been calling me Sujay and Sujay Jank for I don't know how long. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys, let's go to the next right. story. Hey, no, mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. Another two quick, real quick stories for you guys. Uh, I was in here, you know how they have the TVs in the radio room as they do throughout the, the building, and it has, uh, you know, four different channels on it, MSNBC, CNN, et cetera. And then I saw, like, this thing flash. It said Turks. And I was like... It, like, it looked like the beginning of a show, and then it said Young Turks. And I was like, what, see, what happened? They didn't tell me? <laughs> mm -hmm. But it turns out it was that C CNBC show. Oh. You know, there, you know, there's one with the same title. Right. Which, by the way, I'm going to have to ironically sue them over. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I, for a second there, I was like, what the, f <laughs> why didn't they tell me we got a show? Uh, and and it, you know, I, it turns out I do the show at the same time as Brian Williams, and he's in the he's doing nightly news in the studio next door, and I just realized that at the end of the last uh, at the end of the, my last show, and I was like, who's that? I'm like, oh, that's Brian Williams, and of course, my goofy mind, I immediately thought like I should like go up to the window and be like, ah, 
Uh, Brian, what's up, what's up? Well, he's on air. Yeah, that'd be but a bad probably... idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, Actually, it'd be a great... People would be talking about it like crazy, but of course nobody would let me do it. Right. Um, I, I was actually going to ask you, no, I want to tell the audience real quick. So, you know, you're in New York and you will be in New York indefinitely. A lot of people are asking about, you know, the direction of TYT and what's going to happen with us. Jenk, I think this is your opportunity to reassure everyone that you're here. We're in a weird transition process. We're doing our best. Go ahead. Tell, tell the audience what's going on with us. Eh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I think, I think our audience, you know, to be fair, they're under the impression that you know you have one foot out the door and you're doing your MSNBC thing and TYT is just an afterthought. That's not the case at all, guys. We're doing our best. I know that things are a little weird right now, but we want to make the show as entertaining as possible with Jenk in New York. It's just a transition process. I swear. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Like, look, in all seriousness, ten two, ten two. Look. Uh, in, in fact, I'd say we're doing more than that. We're busting our ass trying to work, make this thing work. Yeah, look, in the transition, what can you do? you got to be in the radio room. you got to, you know, it's tough broadcasting. But if we wind up being in New York, don't worry. We built TYT headquarters uh, in East Coast, and then we'll be all East Coast, East Coast. Uh, uh, but either way. I don't know about being East Coast, East Coast. It's all about the West Coast. <laughs> but, that, you know, that's a different discussion. Oh. Fuck the biggie, but anyway, it doesn't look. The bottom line is none of that matters. Of course, TYT were always always going to be top priority. I, like I don't say that in passing. Believe me, if you knew the backstories, always top priority. We're not going anywhere. All right, All right. now let's do the rest of the stories. All right, uh, casting directors are now shying away from American actors. Okay, uh, they do not want to cast American male actors in the roles of superheroes. And the reason why they don't want to do that is because, uh, simply put, they think American actors are wussies. All right. So I have a really interesting quote from um, uh, one casting director. Uh, his name is uh, John Papis, Papisdera. And this is his quote. He says, I believe there's been a certain feminization of the American male. And he blames it on the predominant uh, women's movement in the 60s, by the way. Uh, he goes on to say, as a result, there are a lot of mama's boys. Kids are raised like veal. We're afraid to let them play soccer. That's kind of, uh, that kind of nurturing softens what we're used to seeing on screen. American men aren't men on the screen. Damn. Yeah, not buying it. Not buying it. It's a bullshit theory. I mean, like they pick up a couple of guys like, you know, Eisenberg who played Zuckerberg in, in uh, Social Network. You know, it, they didn't even mention uh, Sierra, but that's another one. And they're like, oh, don't they look skinny? So what? I could find you like 200 guys that don't look skinny in America that are actors. I, I don't know. You, you buying this? No, I'm not buying it. I mean, there's so many manly men that are American actors, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm, he's very manly. <laughs> okay, there's nothing feminine about him. Um, and, you know, other male actors yeah, that yeah. are muscular and yeah. sexy. A end of this. This is a bullshit story. Look, they could, you know, all the people they could have gotten out to play Superman, you know, Ryan Gosling, whatever, Ben Affleck. Ryan Gosling uh, is John not a good Ant example, in my opinion. Uh, not Ryan Gosling. I'm thinking of the wrong guy. Who's the other guy that played in the Coffin movie that everybody thinks is so damn? Went, went out with Scarlett Johansson. Oh, or, Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, right. Whatever, dude. There's, I don't. Know, maybe he's got soft face. But yeah, he's a bad. He's a bad idea too. Not the. Whatever. <laughs> not the example of of a strong, muscular yeah. superhero. Okay, you know what? Forget it. They're right. It turns out all. The <laughs> oh, go ahead, Jay. I'd, I'd be ready to almost, you know, try and see where they're coming from, um, until they got to the soccer line. What? what? I mean, I have nothing against soccer, but all oh, the most manly sport in the world is soccer where we fall down when someone breathes on us. Come on, dude. We play football here, man. We play motherfucking football where we get head injuries and concussions, and we're trying to figure out how to stop this right now anyway. Yeah. Go on, man. Now, uh, yeah, now, maybe the actors are being soft because they're all, you know, they're getting pampered and stuff so much here that they get this idea. But as far as a sport you're throwing around, 
We play football, man. Forget that soccer. Come on, dude. I understand it's a good, it's a sport within itself, but it's not like it's a tough ass sport that Americans just can't are shying away from. Come on, dude. Come on. Calm uh, down. That was a good point by Jr. That he's absolutely right about that. And look, yeah, it, no, no, look. Part part of what they're saying in the article is uh, that in America there is a stereotype of actors as you know, you know, being in drama and sissies and all this stuff, right? And whereas in England there is no such stereotype. And you could be tough and play soccer and, and still be an actor. But that being said, it does sound funny to us Americans, and I'll be a little jingoistic here and join my brother JR. Oh, come on, dude. Come on. Soccer? Soccer? Have you ever seen James Harrison? <laughs> James Harrison could take out a whole soccer team by himself. He just look at him kind of mean, and they'd be like, what's he get and fall down? All right. I, I have no comment on that. I don't even know what you're talking about at this point. <laughs> but uh, what happened? Can you? He's a linebacker for the Steelers. Can you imagine how much the Steelers would fuck the Manchester United players up? Oh, Manchester United, they're very tough. Oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right. The guy, the I got are... randomly, like, <laughs> massively jingoistic there. Sorry, sorry. Yes, Great Britain, we love you guys. <laughs> all right. Uh, I want to get to a video that um, I've been wanting to play on the show all week. It's of a woman from Atlanta. Her name is Jazz Eisen Sinkfield. And she has 20-inch long fingernails that she says are a gift from God. Literally. That's what, she's, that's what she thinks. So um, we have her video. She's going to talk about why she's decided to grow her nails so long. Let's watch. A mother and grandmother with a story to tell. Yeah, well, one day I want to meet. Disaster. Meet Oprah and a lot of more celebrities, and I just want them to, you know, hear my story. The Southwest Atlanta woman expects her story to make her famous, allowing her to share what she calls her divine gift. Show me what's going to make you famous. These are Jazz oh Eisen Sinkfield's fingernails. They represent an ongoing project of 22 years. The longest of them is 24 inches. This, this one right here is my longest one. Are they a gift? And I can say it's a talent too. So growing fingernails is a talent? Yes, because it's something that everyone cannot do. Are people ever ugly to you about them? Yeah, they are. All do, right. you think, do you think most women would want to grow fingernails yeah, like that? Yeah, I, I really do because um, it's a fashion statement now. Jazz Eisen Sinkfield backs her fashion statement with regular visits to this Cascade Road nail salon. All right, guys, let's come back. So she spends about uh, $250 per nail just to get a manicure. $250 per nail to get a manicure and it's a five hour long session. Um, she says that she can't do simple things like tie her shoes, uh, wipe her butt after she goes to the potty. I mean, why? I don't understand why you would do that. Like, I understand that she thinks that this is gonna get her some fame, but no, it's not getting you fame. People are looking at you and thinking that you're a freak of nature. Like, those nails are not attractive. There's nothing great about them. Cut them immediately and enjoy the quality of your life. Yeah. Look, I feel bad for her, and I feel bad I'm about to say this, but she's wasting her life, man. Yes. I, I'm sure it gives her joy, and I'm an ass for judging, but who's wiping your ass? I, I mean, who, how, how about that person? You know what I'm saying? Look, somebody's got to wipe your ass, and that's a disaster. And you can't do anything. She can't take off her jewelry she, it, because once you put it on, she's been doing this for 20-some-odd years. I don't know. Oprah doesn't care, or if she, even if she did care, who cares? She's doing this to meet Oprah. You've been spending 20 years doing this weird thing about growing your nails to meet one. She, Oprah's a human being. Do you know that? She's a human being. She's not some demigod. If you meet her, nothing's going to change. I know. Look, ah. part of me feels so bad because she thinks that this is her one shot at fame and fortune. And, I mean, she seems like a lovely woman. She's not, you know, she's not doing anything bad or terrible. Like, she just... 
She wants that fame. She wants that attention. And she thinks the only way of getting that is having these ridiculous nails. But I just want her to enjoy her life a little bit. Cut the nails. Tie your shoes. Take your jewelry off by yourself. Cook some dinner. Do all the things that you're supposed to do with your hands. Okay? And don't waste $250 per nail to... No. I'm not sure what she's looking for, what kind of uh, fortune. Maybe the fame she's looking for, but the fortune she must already have to spend tw over $1,200 per hand to do her nails That's every crazy. week. That's uh, crazy. That she's, yeah. she's, she's balling already. Yeah. yeah no, that's what I was thinking. I mean, Jesus, she must be in the top bracket. $2,500 every time you go to get a manicure? But what, what does she do for a living? Was she a, a MD, PhD? No, but that's the thing. That's what's super. That's what's super interesting because I mean, what kind of job can you do without your hands? She can't use her hands, so who knows? We don't know what her backstory is. We just know that she spends a ton of money on those nails, and I I feel kind of bad for her. I want someone to sit her down and say, "Look, Oprah doesn't care. It's been years. She hasn't paid attention to you. Just cut them. Cut them now." So yeah, let it go. Let and it go. I, I re the same question: Who wipes your ass? <laughs> All right. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we have more awesome stories for you guys, uh, including um, an African president who wants to ban farting. I know you guys are looking forward to that. We'll be back on The Young Turks. Welcome to the Young Turks, Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uger with you. All right, uh, two liberal, liberal arts graduates from Europe have taken data from Facebook, and this is public data including people's photos, um, cities, and other information, and they've created a dating website. Now I say dating because it's not a real dating website. They just created this uh, to make a point about the availability of people's information on Facebook. And what they did is they used people's information to categorize them as um, uh, smug or easygoing or sly. And all of the people that are included in this uh, fake website were not notified that their information would be used for the website. Now, Facebook found out about it, and they were very upset because they say that this website um, uh, violated their terms. Uh, they're supposed to ask for permission before taking data from Facebook. But uh, these two people from Europe are saying, look, we're trying to make a point about how social networking really works. We're trying to make a point about how easy it is to steal identity off the Internet. And, you know, if people don't want to be included in this website, they can contact us and we'll take them down. But otherwise, we're keeping this website up. So it's a really interesting point that they're trying to make. And, you know, another thing that's very ironic is um, Mar Mark Zuckerberg got his start by stealing information or data off the Internet. He created something known as FaceMash. Uh, he took information about students from uh, his university server and he created a website that compared uh, women and people would rate on rate those women as you know who's more attractive, who's not attractive, that kind of thing. So yeah. Uh, so first of all, yes, Facebook is in no position to complain. Second of all, I don't really know what point these guys are making. It sounds kind of dubious to me. It sounds like they're trying to like somehow make some money while pretending to have a point. Uh, and then third of all, you know what? I think I like Face Mash better than I like Facebook. Like, you know, I remember, you know, I saw on the social network and, you know, when he compared the two different women and who was hotter and, and he did it with all the students at Harvard and that spread like wildfire. Um, and, you know, people at Harvard were incredibly offended. But to me, that seems like a fun game. That uh, seems like much more fun Facebook. I'll tell you why you think that's much more fun than Facebook. A, your grandpa jank. You don't know how Facebook works. It confuses you. So Face Mash has a very easy plot, very easy, you know, idea behind it. Um, and since it'd be easy for you to use, you think it's a lot more fun. And another thing is you love to rate women. Why not? You're going to look at two women, you're going to rate who's hotter, and then you get to look at more female pictures. So uh, that's my theory on that. And I think my theory yeah, is well, absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, but r rating women is full of win. So, uh, by the way, you know, in the original Young Turks song, 
at one point they say, and he rates women, right? Right. That's because I did a show where I put, like, women in, like, based on attractiveness on, I think, like, four different categories. And, and and I explained what the four categories were, et cetera, et cetera. So apparently I've been doing, I've been loving it for a long time. Classy, Jink. Good job. Yeah, in fact, one of the categories was do but don't date. Ah, oh, Jink Uger. So were these celebrities or were they just, you know, random women that you met and you stole their picture off Facebook and then you put them on the no, show? I was creating categories and then I used celebrities as examples of those categories. Like, Oprah was, like, the third category. Like, you could do it. It's not an absolute disaster, like, if you're on a desert island and you don't have any choices, but, you know, something like that. I don't remember. And so, anyway, this all goes to buttress my earlier point in the show that I don't really have great feminist credentials. No, you don't. You don't. But, you know, you're making progress with uh, the way that you handled that abortion story. So, good job on that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, an elementary student from Florida was awarded three hundred fifty thousand dollars because when he was a uh, kindergarten student, he was disciplined twice, and his uh, teacher basically had the entire class vote on whether or not they should throw him out of the class. So um, on the same day that the students did vote to throw him out of the class, he was also diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is. Um, uh, a form of autism. So uh, right. three years later, uh, they, the school settles the lawsuit for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And no. and the girl's mother, I mean the boy's mother, his her name is Melissa Barton. She says that she's still not happy with the settlement. She says uh, money can't take care of what the district did to my family. No, 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 not buying it. Look. I don't know if the school knew the kid had Asperger. You know, that's, I guess, for a court to decide. Uh, if they did, of course, it's much worse. I get it, right? But probably they didn't even know, right? How many times did I get to the, sent to the principal's office? I was fine. I know the, this kid obviously is in a different situation. I 100% get that. But $350,000? Come on. No. You know, no this, look, it comes out of the school system. Then the other kids suffer. You know, for the most part, Jenk, I agree with you. Here's the thing. Um, the, the school did not know that he had Asperger's uh, because he was... Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Okay, okay. But, you know, he was diagnosed um, on the same day that he was voted to get kicked out of the classroom, right? The only thing in the story that, you know, makes me side with the boy is, why are you having a kindergarten class vote on what you should do to discipline the student? I, I hate that. I mean, we did that story about a university professor doing that. And, you know, it, it's so stupid. You're a teacher. You're a teacher. You have the credentials. You decide what you want to do with the discipline. Don't get all these little kids involved in it, you know? Now, that being said, $350,000 is so outrageous. And you're right. It comes out of the district. That money could be used on education. That's what's more important. Should there be some sort of settlement? Maybe, but nowhere near $350,000. No, no. Look, this used to be a category called, okay, sad day for you. Something bad happened to you. Now move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Look, I, I'm, not, I'm not making light of it. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, to be judged by your peers like that, especially when you're a young kid, uh, why did the teacher do that? What a douche move. I get it. I get it. But stuff like that used to happen, and we didn't all get three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for it, you know. And and we don't have the money to be going around giving like it's. This is about the lawyers. The lawyers wanted to make the money. No, I, this is stupid, man. For every time you're traumatizing a kid, you get three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We'd all be zillionaires by now. You can't sue over stuff like this. No, I'm not buying it. Yeah, you know, I'm actually very, very surprised that the school district was willing to settle for that amount of money. Um, you know, the judge uh, basically approved the structured settlement, and then he threw the case out. I'm surprised the district didn't go through with the case, because I would assume that the judge would be a little more reasonable, and if there was some sort of um, agreement, it, would, it wouldn't be anywhere near $350,000. But go ahead. We have our uh, former DA to comment on this. You know, um, I I mean, this case illustrates um, what a lot of the conservatives complain about, this sense of entitlement. 
You know, I mean, Jenk is absolutely right. Just because you get your feelings hurt or something happens to you, you know what? You're not entitled to be compensated monetarily by whatever deep pocket is the closest thing to being somewhat responsible. In this instance, I'm not even sure that the that the teacher's move was that douchey. Maybe the teacher just thought that this was a good way to let the kid understand how his behavior impacts other people and the other kids to kind of be involved in the process. Bad judgment call. There's no way this kid should get fit three hundred fifty thousand dollars, let alone you know, I don't I don't think he should get even a thousand dollars. But yes, this whole idea of something bad happens to us, we should be compensated is bullshit. It's got to stop. I mean, if someone does something that is hurtful or negligent or they have a duty and they they violate, it, I get it, right? But this is this is too much, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, no, hey, hey, I, hey, I look, agree I'm with both of you on this. Go ahead, Jake. I, I'm going to go a little more on the war path. He should get zero on top of zero, okay? Because it's not a category where you get compensated. I mean, if every one of us got compensated for our hurt feelings from when we were a kid to now, we can't function. We can't function. And nobody else gets compensated. Only the people who are pain in the ass and sue get compensated, right? In this case, they didn't even know the kid had Asperger's. Again, we think it's a bad idea. I think it's a worse idea than Steve thinks it is for what the teacher did, right? But teachers do stupid shit. Come on, man. We can't live like this. And look, we did the story on Dennis Kucinich, you know, biting into the olive pit, and then, you know, we made fun of him because he sued for $150,000, and some douche at Daily Coast. I shouldn't say that. I mean, look, the guy has his opinion. I shouldn't call him that, right? So anyway, some guy at Daily Coast wrote an opinion piece saying, uh, oh, actually, Dennis Kucinich totally deserves the money, and look at how terrible Jank Uger was for making fun of him. And then I read the whole thing. I wasted so much of my life reading that stupid blog. There I go again. Anyway, I read it, and there was no facts. Yeah, Kucinich put into the fucking pit, and like, and then he wants one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, you don't get one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, no, I, I can't, I cannot tell you how much I agree with you on that. And, you know, some people would make the case that, oh, you know, this whole issue with Kucinich brings up the whole uh, deal with dental insurance and health insurance and how expensive all of this can be and how we don't have um, basically the means to pay for it, all of that stuff. But, uh, you know, the question of health insurance and dental insurance has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Dennis Kucinich is suing for $150,000 for a tooth problem. Okay, I yeah. get it. I get and, and it. Dental stuff is expensive. I totally understand that. But it's crazy to sue a house cafeteria for $150,000 based on a dental injury that occurred after you bit into an olive pit that was in your veggie wrap. It's crazy. It amazes me that people are um, supporting him on that, but whatever. Yeah, no, because you know why? Because they're on Team Liberal, they're on Team Democrat, and Kucinich is their guy, so they got to support Kucinich no matter what. Look, uh, it, they, and then, of course, some people wrote, oh, Jank, oh, he's probably rich and doesn't know how bad dental care is and how hard it is to get. Are you fucking kidding me, man? You know, I wait, because my, my teeth are fucked up. I wait the whole year until, like, I can get a new allowance from our insurance for the next year of dental work, and then I rush in and get more dental work. Yeah, dental work costs a ton of money, and it sucks. And, and it's hard. There's no real good insurance for it. you got to pay out of pocket, yada, yada. I know all that. That doesn't mean you're entitled to $150,000. Yeah, I agree with you. By the way, going back to the original story about the boy who got his feelings hurt. And look, this is my case is a completely different one, so I'm not trying to make a comparison. But it did remind me of something that happened to me when I was in middle school. When I was in middle school, in sixth grade specifically, our history teacher every single uh, Friday did a raffle. And the person's name who got picked out of the raffle um, would get a prize, okay? I don't remember why she did this, but it was like her way of having fun on Friday, right? So I, I kept waiting every week. Is my name going to get picked out? Is my name going to get picked out, right? Every person whose name would get picked out of the raffle would get applause, right? And all the kids would cheer for them. Everyone loved it. One week, it was finally my turn. They picked my name out, and the entire classroom was silent. Not a single person clapped or cheered. People just kind of looked away. Like It was, th honestly, the most embarrassing moment of my life. I think back at it now, and I still feel a little sick inside, right? Can you imagine if that happened in this day and age, and I sued for like a million dollars and got it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first of all, Anna. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was pretty embarrassing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, jeez, that kind of sucks.
<laughs> I give you twenty five thousand or something, man. That... Hey, Jenks, you should sue um, the East Brunswick school system for when the teacher made fun of you and had all the kids march around calling you hunka chunka. Oh God! No, no, no. You know what, Jake? Uh, Steve told me that story. Like while you're gone, Steve tells me all of these terrible stories about you, which are extremely amusing. But I feel bad for you at the same time. How the hell did you deal with them calling you hunka chunka? When you were a kid, I, that would kill me inside. Because I, I'm not, unlike American actors, I'm not a sissy. Okay? <laughs> I, I'm a fucking brick house. Okay, so you all didn't those play soccer. Yeah, I didn't play soccer. You know, you know I, in fact, I did play soccer. And you know what my soccer coach told me? He said you should play football. <laughs> this is so funny. All right. Um, any other comments on the story? No. Forward. Oh. All right. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, Jenk has some political stories for you guys. And then afterwards, we will have a post game for our members. So I'll see you guys soon.